Now, this is the gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield myself as such time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you. Today, I rise in opposition to House Joint Resolution 7, a resolution to terminate the COVID-19 emergency declaration, a resolution introduced by Representative Gosar. The coronavirus pandemic has been a public health and economic calamity for our country. We lost over one million of our fellow citizens to this deadly virus in wave after wave of devastating news for families. Entire industries have been forced to shut down and then restart from standstill. Others have had, have had to entirely reimagine the way they do business, costing billions of dollars in the process. The impact of the pandemic was inequitable in the extreme. The digital divide grew even wider as those with internet access could work from home or go to school from home, while others were left behind. Transportation workers, healthcare workers, law enforcement, grocery store workers were all unable to work from home, leaving them at an elevated risk during a very dangerous time. But thanks to actions by this Congress, and or the previous Congress, including the American Rescue Plan, the Chips and Science Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, we are well on our way to a robust recovery from this dark chapter of our nation's history. However, our work is not done. New variants continue to emerge, taking a toll on our workforce and exacerbating the labor shortage facing many businesses. Healthcare workers are still on the front lines of this pandemic. Last week, they saw nearly 4,000 Americans die from COVID. Terminating the emergency declaration now sends the wrong message and could have consequences for public health and safety. In my state alone, we had over 4,000 cases in the last week. The uncertain impact of long COVID, particularly on those with pre-existing health conditions, adds a layer of complexity to our path to normalcy. With these complex issues still facing business, local leaders and the American people, it would be harmful and irresponsible to force a premature end to the flexibility offered by the Presidential Emergency Declaration from March of 2020. Now, President Biden has no intention of using these emergency powers forever. We know that because he announced his intention to end the COVID-19 national emergency on May 11th. This May deadline provides time to develop a strategic and a thoughtful plan regarding the termination of these authorities. There's no need for Congress to act now before the President acts on this issue. Forcing an end to the emergency declaration without regard to the consequences is short-sighted and wrong. There are many examples where a rushed move to end the national emergency declaration could have unintended negative consequences for the U.S. Ending the emergency declaration would roll back the enrollment and payment deadlines for individuals who have lost their jobs to sign up for COBRA or pay COBRA premiums. This will mean burden deadlines on consumers who get health care coverage through job-based plans, including laid off workers and their families. Ending the emergency declaration will reverse efforts to address mass incarceration and prison crowding by terminating the CARES Act home confinement provisions. This makes it difficult for the Bureau of Prisons to protect inmates who are at high risk of serious illness or death from COVID-19. Ending the emergency declaration will end video court proceedings. This is inefficient and will cost marshals time and money if they resume transporting inmates back and forth to court. Ending the emergency declaration will cut pre-planned sickness benefits and employment and unemployment benefits for rail workers. It is wrong to cut these earned benefits when rail workers need them most. Ending the emergency declaration will also threaten victims of crime assistance funding or VOCA funding, a critical lifeline for individuals and children dealing with the aftermath of being a victim to crime. The administration has a plan to bring the National Emergency Declaration to an orderly end on May 11th, aligning with its commitment to give at least 60 days notice prior to termination. I think this is a sensible and reasoned approach that Congress should support. We shouldn't be using an ax when a scalpel will do. And rushing this resolution to the floor is the wrong approach, and I urge my colleagues to oppose it. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time.